online dating adventures. <laughs> what? Yes. Match up. Called, uh, <laughs> naked and ticklish. <laughs> <laughs> this is actually, this went a little beyond just dating. This actually turned into something sort of accidentally, Oops. which, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. The last two guys I started something with had Rottweiler. I'm not a Rottweiler fancier at all. The guy once tall was young and dumb and it jumped up and got its nose between your legs and ate the sleeves out of guy one's full sweaters. somebody and they're starting a new religion. <laughs> back away, back away. A new religion <laughs> without a god. I guess guy one wanted to be the number one guy. There was no door on the bedroom and the dog and his jumping wheels. And it's cold where blows were distracting during sex. So guy one got up and took the bathroom door off its hinges. So yeah, there's a little bit of home renovation in the middle of the action. So he's up getting the door off the bathroom and coming back down the hall with the door to put it on the bedroom hinges. But the door Guy one got a big chunk of coral from his collection. Yes, he had a collection of coral. So another clue. <laughs> guy one was a big guy over six feet tall, and he picked a big. For myself when I wanted to go to the bathroom, I bent naked, naked and ticklish, lifting and carrying the coral across the room. This was an improvement, and 
Until it came time to settle in for the first night Turns out I was in the dark spot And the dog would like its spot back It keeps standing up and turning around and around And the door is really open Until the door is closed Holding it closed Naked and ticklish Naked and ticklish that we met a number of years ago in Chicago and he was documenting the free jazz scene there and uh, recording and taking photographs and he had a small record label. He was also a war protester. He was a guy in his 50s and uh, we heard some years after meeting him that he had taken a very drastic action and uh, in protest of the war he had killed himself by lighting himself on fire outside the, uh, on the freeway in Chicago. And he had uh, tried to make a document of his action and have his friends come and get the tape and all this sort of convoluted activity in order to get it in front of the public, uh, utilizing the media. But uh, his family evidently got a hold of the tape and understandably didn't want it to take that course. So his actual protest was very much diluted. And uh, so we were talking about the situation. I wrote a song about him and I realized sometime later, as you, as you sometimes do when you write a song, you you learn maybe what it was about on down the road a little bit. And uh, so it felt like this was a document about his making of a document. And it's one of the things, well, it's, it's sort of an, a strange subject and we don't obviously condone suicide and we are working in front of uh, high school students and uh, other, other sorts of groups on this tour doing our lecture, How Art and Music Can Change the World. But my intention of outlining the story of the, the song and our uh, kind of furthering his message with a song is, is sort of a, an illustration of how music can propel ideas about actions that might not have been heard about. And in fact, David has a poster series that's fo a focal point of our, our, our uh, spoken program called Inspired Agitators, and it highlights... Uh, the activities and life and goals of uh, some people that he has found very inspiring throughout history. So that's kind of been a course of our action is to try to uh, put the ideas in front of people that, that have maybe been left aside in some way in history. So this is called Malachi. <laughs> document to the jazz musician after they perform and you talk and you listen and you protest this Gasoline is there on the ground for 
this final document, your protest against this war. And some of us heard, and some of us understood your final word.